No phone, patchy internet. It'd be nice sometimes, but not when it's every day. It's the major city suburb stuck in a black hole. Once again, cafe owner Trent Wilson is doing the eft post wave. It's not working, Ange. He's had a gutful, but he's not the only one. We're like a third world country, right in the middle of Sydney. The frustrated community of Cottage Point on Sydney's northern beaches has gathered. We don't have curb and gutter, we don't have a lot of street lighting, we don't have gas, water, sewerage. And to top it off, they don't have proper communications. We've had one person die in this community and they suffered an unexpected heart attack. Their partner couldn't get in contact with the emergency services. It's one of the prettiest parts of Sydney, but there's one ugly word round here. Telstra. Mobile phones don't work here. Landlines and the internet come out of this shed with its 1970s technology. Locals say wind, rain and storms constantly knock out the signal. And now they're losing one other important thing. No children. There's not very few children here and the reason why, obviously parents have to commute to take their children to school but there's no, not efficient internet for them to be able to do their schoolwork. Down at the kiosk, Trent's wife Ange is frustrated for her younger daughter. Some parts of her learning she just, we had to forego and the school was great and understood that but we didn't feel like that was fair on her. Five dollars. And then there's their business, trying to operate in a world where cash is drying up. How often does that happen? <laughs> it happens all the time, all really? the time. They're already downstairs and, the, and, we, and we haven't had the transaction go through. And you've got to go and chase okay, the yeah, customer. Go chase the customer and go, I'm so sorry, but it hasn't gone through. At the nearby Cottage Point Inn restaurant, owner Shane Olson is another businessman facing the same troubles. We've had times when the internet's gone down for, or, or, or the phones have gone down for a couple of weeks and you've just writing down credit card numbers so you can't process the payments until the phones come back up. So imagine being a rescuer without communications. If we don't know that people need help, a lot of trouble. On these waterways, Marine Rescue Boss Tony and his team are here to save lives. The operation to examine the wreck and begin the task of recovering the passengers and pilot... Tony can't forget that well. day in 2017 when a seaplane crashed here in front of two fishermen, killing all six on board. The fishermen were on site within minutes, but they had no phone reception. Cottage Point is a designated mobile black spot community. And the situation is so grave, it's been brought up in federal parliament. It is downright dangerous that emergency services cannot be contacted directly when phone reception drops out again. Their federal member at that time, Jason Falinski, got the money for the new communications. We fought for the funding. We all had federal support. We actually fought hard for it. That should have been the end of it, but it wasn't. And then three and a half years later, nothing. Absolutely nothing. Millions of taxpayer dollars were given to Optus, who in turn commissioned Telstra to build two towers for phones and internet. One to replace that shed, and the other on a high ridge at nearby Barara. It's to deal with motivation. I'll wager that if the CEO of either of the two major telcos lived here, or their family or neighbours, we wouldn't be having this discussion. For years, Rural Fire Brigade Chief John Russell has been asking the telcos, when are you going to start? Zero has happened, and they're just constantly feeding me absolute, utter rubbish. So for safety, it's come to this. Everybody's gone out and bought themselves a 5-watt handheld UHF CB. If an emergency arises, locals contact John, who uses the Fire Brigade communications tower. But now, after all this time, Telstra has told us they have finally found a telegraph pole at Barara that is in line of sight of Cottage Point. And lo and behold, the day we filmed, two technicians arrived to survey the pole. Perhaps that Telstra phone booth in the main street of Cottage Point, with its teasing advertisement, might just come to fruition. In 1969, 
we put two men on the moon. They live streamed it from the moon to Earth hundreds of thousands of kilometres away. 54 years later, the telcos can't put up a steel post with a receiving dish on it to capture signals from three kilometres away.